Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Brian Heisler, your host, and today we're going to go to video two of our series on interpreting charts and graphs. And today we're going to focus on line graphs. So let's look at a couple of them. So we have an example here of a line graph. It's a pretty simple line graph of just one line, and uh, we have a couple questions here. So I told you in my other video about uh, bar graphs to always look at your graph to kind of analyze it real quick. It's the same setup you have on your x-axis at the bottom. You have some information. In this case, we have weeks. On the y-axis over on the far left, you have data. In this case, number of miles. And you have a title at the top middle that says the number of miles rode on a bicycle. So let's look at our questions. Question one says, in which week did the cyclist ride the most miles and then also the least miles? So it's a two-part question. The most miles, the easy way to look at this is, well, which week has the dot that's the highest up? And in this case, it's very easy to see it's this one. It's the highest number, which is week five. So number one, I'm going to write five. And I'm going to separate it with a comma just because that will help us you know, separate the two answers. The least miles, where the least is the dot that's the lowest down. In this case, it looks like it's all the way down here on week one. So week one is going to be our answer for the least amount of miles. Pretty simple question. Okay, let's look at question two. Question two asks, in which month did the greatest increase in mileage occur? So there's kind of two ways to approach this. One is, I guess, the longer way is you can look at the number of miles each week and kind of write that down and then compare them. Or if you understand how line graphs work, typically what's going to happen is the week that has the highest increase is going to be the one that has the biggest slope. And so if you understand how slopes work, and I have a couple videos on that, you can check them out. Um, the highest slope is the one that's got the steepest angle. It's the one that rises the most. So if you look at the different rising levels, you know, from week one to two, it's okay. Two to three is, you know, a little bit. From three to four right here to here, that's really high angle. It's a really high angle. That's probably going to be our biggest slope. Um, you know, from four to five, looks like it's pretty big, but not as high as three to four. You know, five to six obviously isn't going to be the answer because that goes down, so that's not going to help us. And then six to seven is pretty, pretty low. So... I'm going to say the increase is from week three to week four. So when they ask you in which uh, month, actually it should be week, but you know, we'll not worry about that. Um, did the greatest increase occur? It's always the second of the two. So from three to four means that week four is the one that had the increase. So that's going to be the answer for that one. We're going to put four. So again, it really helps to kind of understand the idea of the layout and the information in bar graphs or line graphs, sorry. Let's look at another example. We have another line graph. In this case, we have two different lines that are kind of coded differently. One of them is solid, one of them is dotted. And so we have two questions as well. In which year or years did dealer B, which is going to be our dotted line, sell more cars than dealer A, which is our solid line. So I'm going to change colors so that's easier to tell. So <clears throat> dealer B needs to be higher than dealer A, which means the dotted line has to be higher than the solid line. So let's find all those points. The dotted line is higher, let's see here, uh, let's see here and here. Looks like everywhere else the solid line wins. So the years for that are going to be Let's see, we have year one, we have year six and seven. Perfect, all right? And then we need number two, the question. How many more cars were sold by dealer A than dealer B in week three? So that's a good question because it means we can focus directly on week three, the rest of the data doesn't matter. So week three is right here, and I wanna look just at those two numbers. So dealer A is here. Looks like it's probably about between 300 and 320. Let's call it 310. And then dealer B is right on 260. So basically, how many more is 310 than 260? It's a subtraction problem. 310 minus 260 is 50. So there are 50 more cars. 
So again, it really helps to understand kind of how line graphs work, what the information is telling you. Keep in mind how slope will help you interpret graphs and always look at the axis, the points on the axis, whether it's years, months, weeks, all that stuff, and then what's on the y-axis, which is your numbers. Um, and I hope this helps as you get the line graphs. Make sure to check out our next video and we're gonna look at circle graphs or pie graphs. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Brian, your host of Math Talk. I just wanna thank everyone for watching my videos on YouTube and following me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, if you feel like after watching these videos, you still need the better classroom setting or 101 and you live in the Palm Beach County area, come visit our website at www.gedyes.com. Come check out the different locations that we have and find one that suits you best, that's closest to where you are, and you can come take classes. Thanks for watching.